Yeah, when he had almost 500 horsepower more in the uh, 4, 5, 1450 unit. So the competition started off at Brands Hatch at the beginning of the year, and Mercedes looking strong. But Sisu expected to provide the challenge, Harry Lewis Dorinen, and here Minna Kuopula, the lady racer, amongst the favourites for the event. And naturally, Gerd Korber as well. The European champion of 1991 had changed over to Sisu during the previous year. However, he'd had a pretty difficult start to this year. Well, he says, uh, very last moment, and we very nearly missed the ferry to Sweden, just by 10 minutes. We still have running gear problems, that's why. Heinz Werner Lenz was another ex-MAN driver of the Super Race Truck class who switched to the Sisu camp for this year. But the MAN colours were being flown as usual by Hans George von der Marwitz. So he's always very competitive in the world of truck racing. The first of the new MANs was being shown off by the Frenchman Noel Crozier. Richard Walker was also making a return to truck racing with the Zill Caterpillar and at Brands Hatch it was going very well indeed. His home circuit and the truck seemed well adapted to the tight nature of the Indy circuit and the various ups and downs and indeed he was soon challenging Slim Borgard in the first of the qualifying races of the 1994 truck racing season. From the beginning of the race, he was in position right behind Slim Borgard. But Borgard just taking the first victory of the year. Brands Hatch was also the uh, proving ground for the new rules governing qualification and cup racing. During the first final, Fritz Kreuzpointer had an unwelcome experience on the rather wet circuit. But later in the year, he would show off his uh, fine skills in these rather tricky conditions. Steve Parrish was at where he wanted to be, up in his familiar leading position, and meanwhile Slim Borgard was having another battle with Richard Walker, and this time Borgard was coming off the worse. And so Steve Parrish took uh, the success at Brands Hatch. In fact, he took maximum points from this first meeting of the year, finishing up with 60 points, an excellent start to the season. So the defence of his championship are well underway. We'll be back with more truck racing here on Eurosport after the break. It was created even in the qualifying runs, and that battle on again between Steve Parrish and Slim Borgard. The Italian commentators, well known for their enthusiasm, describing the battle for pole. Yes, indeed, Slim Borger taking the, a new lap record on his way to pole position on the Santa Monica track and planning to give Parrish a hard time in the race. Yeah. In La Castellet and Camorra. Let's go to a look at some of the mid-season race action from the trucks.
in Kimura, way up in northern Finland. He obtained a Mercedes engine and installed it in his Sisu. And with the new combination, the Sisu Mercedes, he was able to really attack during the Grand Prix in the Eiffel Mountains. This certainly gave the 200,000 German fans something to cheer about, and it was successful. Bring the uh, atmosphere really alive at the Nürburgring, because Gorba really very much popular with the fans, and he also got involved in a tremendous battle in the races with uh, Fritz Kreuzpointner. The two Germans at it hammer and tongs throughout the event. It was a very tough battle indeed, and at times it was getting uh, much enjoying it, however, quite a lot of damage. And, uh, well, they managed to sort it out. Harry Lewis Dorenen in the white Sisu there was also going very much better here at the Nürburgring. And at last we were seeing one of the white truck on the outside, and he was uh, pulling off some fairly remarkable overtaking manoeuvres himself. Going around the outside of Manuel Santos onto the start-finish straight, Jochen Mas showing that uh, his Grand Prix experience and uh, sports car experience adapting very quickly showed clearly that Parrish and Borgood would do each other no favours at all when it came to racing at the front. Into the first corner, contact between them, and Borgard squeezed out into the gravel trap on the outside. Richard Walker getting in on the act as well. But up front, Steve Parrish, once again, taking the chequered flag ahead of his Swedish opponent. So he was looking forward to the next round at Donington Park in Leicestershire, but uh, as so often happens when the home favourites get to their local circuits, things go wrong. And engine problems with the V6 engine in uh, the Mercedes truck meant that Parrish was not going to have so much success here this weekend. Slim Borgert also had his own troubles, and it meant that uh, Fritz Kreuzpointer had his chance to take his first grand final vict victory in his truck racing career. Oil on the track led to a few incidents, including this fairly dramatic off for Hans George von der Marwitz, which had the marshal scampering out of the way. And for this reason, the race was red flagged. So the win indeed went to Fritz Kreuzpointer. Kreuzpointer delighted with that uh, victory, his first in truck racing after some very competitive performances throughout the season. Uh, was a slightly different wet surface that greeted them and Fritz Kreuzpointer was not going to have so much luck this time. Down through the Craner curves, we're on board with Kreuzpointer, let's watch what happens. A big sideways moment as he goes onto the brakes for the old hairpin, off into the gravel trap. And the message back to the pits that he's playing no further part in the race. So victory to Slim Borgard in this second race at Donington Park. And that certainly closed. At the, during the previous year, Steve Parrish had uh, got himself together after a few defeats at the hands of Marcus Ostroik during the race at most in the Czech Republic. And he did the same again this time. It was the others who had technical or other problems at most. With this success in the Czech Republic, he drove in Zolder only four points. It certainly looked as though the third European title in succession and his fourth overall was taking shape. We'll be back in just a moment with the final part of the duel between... In front of a massive crowd once again here at Garama, the first drama did not concern any of the contenders for the title, but Fritz Kreuzpointner. He had a fuel line come adrift and a hot diesel going on to the very hot turbo engine, soon igniting and causing all sorts of dramas. Generally speaking, the equipment was under a fair bit of pressure here in the final round of the championship, with all the drivers knowing that uh, they had all winter to repair the vehicles at the end of it. Well, going on his way to the title, Steve Parrish, and the most important thing for him was simply to collect points. So not too much uh, risk-taking involved for him. He was intent on simply making sure that he got a necessary number of points. He finished second to Slim Borgard on the first day. 
And as we went on to the second day, all he needed to do was finish well up in the qualifying race to make sure that he took his third championship in a row. Slim Borgard watching from the sidelines as uh, he was waiting for his qualifying race. And David Atkins pointing out that they only needed four points from this race. Indeed, finishing second place to Fritz Kreuzpointer in the qualifying race on the Sunday was plenty enough for Steve Parrish to take the title. So once again, Parrish proving himself the pick of the bunch in Europe, facing his third title in a row and his fourth overall. We spoke to him, to Steve Parrish, the European champion once again, and with the new rules for this year, the Super Race Truck Series, he's shown once again that he's the class of the field. He promises well for the 1995 championship. And finally, to end our programme today, we want to take a quick look at the race truck season, the more standard category of uh, truck racing, but also enjoyed some pretty spectacular battles and a very tight battle for the overall championship between Martin Kollock in the Sisu and Oya Overbrink in the Volvo. Well, here at the Nürburgring was typical of the battle that continued throughout the year between these two. Martin Kollock just running a little bit wide but Oya Overbrink not being able to get through. Contact made between the two of them. This was typical of the action between these two. The fight went all the way through to the end of the season. There were problems at the beginning of the year when Kolok started uh, using disc brakes, something that's prohibited in this category. Therefore, it uh, got a little bit contentious between the two of them at some points. And uh, although Overbrink was, to a certain extent, the underdog, nevertheless, after a tremendous battle, over the course of the final weekend in Harama. Overbrink had the chance of taking the title by just collecting a few points. In fact, he was able to let uh, Kolok go through and not challenge quite so hard for position because he knew that he would do enough to score enough points and take the title. Well, indeed, he did enough, Oya Overbrink, to take the championship, scoring enough points in the final race. So the curtain falls on truck racing for another year and we look forward to a new season in 1995 when the monsters at the track will once again be doing battle. Remember, you'll be able to follow all the uh, truck racing action here on Eurosport as we've brought it to you throughout this season. We hope you've enjoyed it so far and look forward to seeing you again next year.